evening friends this evening we are going to discuss the art of communication series and uh, the first one on this series is how to present a paper this is more uh, designed for young surgeons who are in early their career you see the public speaking and the art of presenting on the stage is learnt by three methodologies very few people are born as a public speaker majority of us have learnt this art by working with our senior faculty our mentors during our residency who influenced the art of speaking in the young generation I happen to be lucky to be trained under Dr. Angston and believe me the kind of effort he used to put in us day in and day out to polish up our skills to present papers if I remember let me tell you a story whenever we were going to present paper in a conference around 9 to 12 midnight there would be a rehearsal meant for the residents at Dr. Eggleston's house and in that particular uh, session uh, Mrs. Barbara Eggleston who was Dr. Eggleston's wife happened to be a CTVS uh, qualified nurse who used to sit with boss and would like to remind correct us on every single thing how to give a pause which particular point to emphasize more and the correct pronunciation for different words I had a close friend who is a top-notch uh, guy in his profession today he was trying to present oh, those earlier days when the tangential excision and skin grafting had come in and he was going to present the paper and every time he tried to speak you know the guy who invented this technique was Zora but every time he will say then uh, instead of Zora he would say Zora at all and I still remember Mrs. Barbara Eggleston told him around a dozen times oh it is not Zora it is Zora I mean they took care of us to that finish level that till the resident can pronounce well till the resident can give adequate pauses and his body language is adequate the boss will continue to do training the commitment of the faculty on that part is gradually declining though we have very bright faculty today who deliver excellent uh, you know presidential lectures who deliver excellent uh, orations here and there I have people who have delivered 100 orations but when I look at how did I got motivated to get on this kind of uh, lecture series is when I look at the boss who delivers excellent lectures but then when I look at his in-house residents junior consultants and people who are undergoing super specialty training with the same boss who is an excellent orator he has taught hundreds of people the transplant and the complex urology and the complex things but when I look at his residents when I look at his fellows and his junior consultants probably they are only learning transplant from him not the art of communication that's what motivated me to request even other senior faculty that they join us that we train and pass on this message I am not a great orator but whatever little bit I know I want to share with you so uh, with that in mind we start today's first part which is presenting a scientific paper to the level of a young surgeon now whenever we are planning see we are not all born speakers let's remember that in today's era the life is much easier because you guys are born in an era of computer 
in cell phone where you can rehearse again and again. You can look at yourself, you can analyze yourself and improve upon your presentation day in and day out. Now, let me uh, get down to threadbare of uh, a scientific presentation. There are three important components in any scientific presentation. One single important is the speaker. Second is the top topic. And the third thing is the audience. Now, speaker being the pivotal role, but then the speaker must analyze what is my relevance to this particular topic. Am I an authority on the topic? Am, why am I called to deliver this lecture? And what is going to be my audience? What is their interest? Until we cannot deliver a message, until we cannot carry the audience with us, the situation, the audience will always have a lukewarm response. When you are delivering the best of your presentation, the guys are busy on their iPhone. So a good speaker must analyze, I repeat, when he gets the topic, his homework starts there and then. He needs to analyze that in this topic, how would I make a difference in the life of my audience? Are they going to carry home a message? Will they start operating better? Would they start managing their patients a shade better? What can I do to make my presentation so attractive that the audience is glued to me throughout my course of lecture? So with this background and what is the kind of audience? You know, we can have a very receptive audience. We can have a very hostile audience at times that people, when you start the lecture, I have seen so many times when somebody starts a lecture, the half the hall people get up and get lost. So either the topic selected doesn't interest people. Now let me tell you, even when the topic is odd, if the heading of the topic is made interesting, then still the audience will give a trial to listen to. If I say, is, if a topic is 200 cases of lab cholecystectomy in acute cholecystitis, their complications, probably nobody is willing to entrust. If I change my topic and I say, what went wrong in lab cholecystectomy? Now, by just change of the topic, material remaining the same, I have created some kind of curiosity. You know, the human mind always is attracted towards curiosity, towards something which is not known. So when we float a topic, the headline of the topic, the theme of the topic should look attractive to the crowd. Even the content may not be. That, that will depend upon how you sell your topic. Now, the next point is making good slides. Now, when we are discuss the topic, we have isolated what is going to be the content, what is going to be the message. Now, when it comes to preparing your slides, remember, no slide should have more than six lines. The human mind has limitations. And a human mind is willing to be susceptible to you. In the first 30 to 40 seconds, the human mind tries to analyze whether this lecture is worth it or not. People will make a judgment on your first one minute, whether they sit in the hall to encourage you and they are not listening to you. They are not with you. Hence, the beginning of the lecture, the opening has to be a crowd puller technique. I will get down to that later, but not more than six lines. Number two, 
the maximum pictorial images conveying the same thing then conveys much more message number three don't read your slides suppose to to give an example if i'm putting up a demographic survey and i want to convey that in my series 80 percent of patients were females and 20 percent were males now it is written there so it is absolutely unsmart to say in my series 20 percent were males and 80 percent were females what you speak should not be written there it's very pleasant to people to say majority of my patients were females and change the slide now don't give a data that which is complicating the issue the complications are you know if you want to put up 20 percent 30 percent and a big graph and a big table that does not impress anybody nobody is interested to look into minute details they have come to get a message from you hence avoid all such things try to introduce something new do not remember in most conferences since we are addressing a surgical gathering most conferences it is the same chronic audience which will meet you in bombay which will meet you in all india institute the same guys will meet you in ludhiana conference so please do not repeat the same lecture again and again because we have a curiosity i give a lecture in ludhiana i put it on youtube and after three months i the same audience is gathered in hyderabad and i present the same lecture so people before you reach they will tell their neighbors on the sides oh i have heard about this not good let's go out so always change the topic remember the chronic audience is the same each time you may change the place but people listening somewhere in the hall around 25 percent are the same people wherever you go and they are the leaders i have seen some of the very senior faculty doing this mistake again and again now well you have prepared the topic well you have selected the slides you know how to start and then let me come to a point are good speakers only in united states and not in bangladesh no are good speakers born no they are all made now to to exemplify the best football players the world class coaches are not born with a different right knee or left foot they have become world class because they practiced they practiced after their school time they went to playground on their holidays they went to playground they went everywhere to practice and it is world over acknowledged that it takes an average of average of 10,000 hours to become a world-class master when you want to present the best of game whether you're a speaker whether you're a singer whether you're a you know guitar player the volume of your practice makes you perfect so howsoever good you may be you must rehearse yourself and believe me three minutes of practice every day try to you know in olden days in my residency days we were practicing in front of our bathroom mirror and well well we couldn't really know what where did we go wrong and since now the current generation has got cell phones as a computer camera on your pc so try practicing the more you practice then you listen yourself involve your friend when you're going to give a good lecture on an important meeting involve ask suggestions because you cannot have your boss along with you throughout the life and you may be the boss don't feel ashamed of repetition rehearsal that gives you and you may if you're shy of if you're grown senior enough and you feel shy of presenting in front of your colleagues then it's fair enough you practice yourself record your own rehearsal and then analyze where you've gone wrong 
Now, <clears throat> whenever you are going to speak, you have to be very clear on four issues. Point number one, you have to say something, which means it should be your experience, your data, your information. Second point, say it well, whatever you want to convey, you should be able to speak well, convey the message well, either through your slides or through your pictorial or through your voice, convey it well. And third point, read the audience. A good speaker can always Welcome, Dr. Ramana. We would surely love your suggestions. You are a very smart orator. I am really impressed by your orations as long as I am heard about you and uh, I have always taken notes on that. And uh, <clears throat> when you are trying to convey something, convey it with passion, with intensity, so that the audience feels that you are involved in the speciality. Next important thing is your powerful voice. Let me tell you the most strength in the voice is the strength of silence. Give pauses, create suspense and curiosity. Like if I have to say, I will say Several years ago, on one winter night, chilly night, when I was doing similar case, Dr. Eggleston told me something which changed and affected my whole life. And then I gave a pause. Obviously, there is a curiosity to find out what did Dr. Eggleston tell this guy, which changed his whole life. Now, when you speak, take it to make your voice more emphatic and create a resonance. You always take a deep breath like this without the public noticing. When you want to say something important and speak with resonance like may, my, I mean, this creates a more important impact on the public and change the variety you should be talking as you talk normally to your friends like in a networking group whatever you want to say as you speak across the table so you should speak when it comes to something important you can change your pitch on certain points you can go up on certain points you become soft so that People are involved with you. It should not be monotonous from beginning to end. Articulate your words. Whatever you want to speak, speak loud, clear, slow. For my younger friends, I repeat, speak, articulate, loud, clear, slowly, so that, and then give a pause so that the audience is taken along with you. Now, one last point in speaking on the dice is a language, is a point which is heard well from Australia to London, from Kanyakumari till the other end of the country and in all languages. When you want to say an important dialogue, I repeat, when you want to say an important dialogue, the end of the dialogue should have di downwards inclination. Now I'm going to tell you, as you say that, that is accepted as more confident speaker than otherwise. So if I have, I will announce a thing, I, I would like to say, Hospital X produces the best residents. This is a doubtful thing. When your sound at the end of the dialogue is upwards, this is universally accepted. Then I say, Hospital X produces very good residents. 
Hence, this language is accepted as a more confident word. Now, your name is announced. We are now on the stage. Now we have done the groundwork. We know how to speak. Our slides are ready. When you are walking on the stage, summer or winter, you should be formally dressed. Remember, if we have some stalwarts who are the prime runners in their field, uh, to name, I will not name anybody. We all know who are the uh, prime movers in urology, in GI, in cardiovascular, in AVR. If a couple of them in each specialty are excluded. I mean, they may walk with a red shirt, with a green tie, and uh, in whatever dress they want to walk, they walk in. They are respected because when their name is announced, much earlier than that, people come and get seated in the hall. Everybody wants to listen to those key speakers who have spent their lifetime in creating a technique, in educating the masses, in bringing up right knowledge to youngsters. Their dress has got zero value. But mind it, for a young surgeon, for a young consultant who is upcoming, the dress has a role till the person speaks. If you are an authority on the subject, dress has no role. But when you are not among the, those top half a dozen consultants in each specialty, you must come formally dressed. A black, a black, a dark suit with a red tie and a light shirt always gives your better impression than anything else. And uh, well, when your name is announced, do not, when they, they will start speaking. Uh, uh, Dr. Johns William from Hopkins is the godfather of renal transplant. This is how the stage speaker will speak, the chairperson. And uh, he has come from Hopkins and uh, he has done brilliant research on renal transplant and he is here to share his cadaveric. Now, this guy is going to take a minute and a half of introduction. And if you start walking, already and reach the dais and you're already on the podium that doesn't look nice the smartest move is let that guy when he's going toward the end of his introduction then you start walking with a very confident slow gait straight back and then reach the dais so that the crowd is waiting, who is John William? These are all fictitious names. I don't want to involve any personal names in this game. So now the John William professor is on the dice. And then, friends, he should take 15 seconds silence. So the crowd claps and settles down. Then when we start, I told you in the beginning, first 30 seconds is going to decide how many people are going to sit in the house and how many people are going to be sitting and still busy on their mobiles and not listening to you. So, how to start a lecture? Now, after this, what tricks I'm going to tell you, when you analyze all big speakers on whom you clap, they are all using this trick. And you are being influenced by that. Now, and you as a youngster can also pick up, you know, the opening, the start has to be a attention grabber. Now, but still, let me tell you, in any conference, 80% people will say, Hi, I'm GD Sharma. I'm from New Delhi. I'm going to talk on Empyma Golbeter. Now, when you speak like this, the whole crowd is going to open their phones because all of them know because they have a program with them. I mean, this is the poorest kind of presentation to say your name, where from you are, what you're going to talk. This is already in with them. So don't, this is the silliest mistake any speaker can do. Second point is people and you will find these people. These are two happenings which I have seen and I have learned. Now, what will happen? A guy would come on the stage. And he says, oh, uh, uh, is the mic working? Then they would say, uh, can you hear me in the back? Oh, sorry for the poor slides. 
and uh, things like that. When you start apologizing even before you started the lecture, that gives a very, very poor show. Then uh, the most people who would start, you can start is either three of the things which, which most people try. The first thing is for involving the audience. If I will say this is the least, this is the least effective. I'm starting from level three. This is asking the audience, dear friends, how many of us think that a good mentor makes a difference in the life of a surgical resident? Please raise hands. So when you ask such a question, people wake up that there must be something these people are asking the raising hands. You raise some question which is pertinent to your lecture and which can attract the crowd, right? How many of us think that Whipple's operation is a fairly easy procedure for anybody to learn. Obviously, it wakes up everybody when you're going to talk about something about pancreas or something about Whipple. So, well, this is one of the modality, but this is not the brightest modality. The second thing is you float a data to say that some percentile data, which is true, which is relevant to your topic and if you have to exemplify that data that only this much percent people will survive to see their fifth birthday. We are not saying how many of them will die. We are saying this much percentage would live to see their fifth birthday after surgery. We can say a quotation. I, I know of a speaker who said Muhammad Ali, he showed a picture of Muhammad Ali. Now he is going to talk some surgical technique for education purposes, but the first slide is of Muhammad Ali, which says people who cannot work hard can never succeed in life. Well, everybody sees Muhammad Ali. Well, the guy is going to talk about uh, LAR, but he is showing Muhammad Ali, just to wake up the crowd. Then, a couple of them, a very attractive methodology is to start with a story. When I was a child, no? and then you narrate a story which may relate your interpersonal relationship. You say, when I was a child, one of my neighbor was beaten to death and he could not be revived. That was an emotional episode of my life which created my interest in trauma and today I am going to talk about aortic trauma, right? Some kind of story which relates to you, it may make an emotionality to your personal life and stories make a lot of difference. When you start the story, create some curiosity, people would like to be with you. Then. Once you have introduced the topic, then the body language is very, very important. 70% is conveyed through body language and 20%, 30% by our verbal communication. Now, when we stand on the dais, remember, boss used to say always, never show your posterior half to the audience. That means do not read the slides. Even you should not be looking at your computer again and again. Have a eye to eye contact with the audience. And your head should be not only the head should be moving in all the directions. You can even you can even move with your feet being stationary. Your upper half of the trunk can move right, left and center and you can have a contact with the whole audience. That keeps the audience engaged when you have when you have changing of your voice tone, you are in, in decreasing your amplitude at the end of the message and on top of it you have an eye to eye contact. Now 
the your hand movements also convey a lot if i have to say that a very simple example if i have to say that peep i will request people at the back to come forward and sit at these seats and instead of this i say people at the back please come forward now that that reflects arrogance and i have seen some of the senior professors showing their finger at the audience well <clears throat> it, it doesn't give a very bright impression my younger friends would not show a finger they will be more receptive with flexion of hands movements towards palm facing their face that that's something regarding body language we will discuss about body language at the another time that's a separate topic so when we have gone through the main topic now we need to tell the audience that we are now i am going to end the topic when i say that i can use any word which may look uh, stubborn which may look uh, pure wooden kind of uh, uh, dialogue but i have to some way signal the audience that now I am going to end my talk. So whether I say, uh, friends, to summarize, to conclude, to end, or my final message, say something. Then summarize three, four points in one breath. Say whatever I want to say, I would say in one breath. Uh, one of the last lectures I gave in ASI was uh, on uh, surgeon as a prognostic factor. So I will share with you how I summarize the I summarize I put up a big poster of Bhagwan Krishna with Arjun on his Gita Rath. Now the slide doesn't show the important thing is your concluding slide should be such that it wakens up everybody. It was that Gita Rath with Bhagwan Krishna and Arjuna and that was the slide instead of conclusion i wrote gita sar so i said the gita sar of i didn't use the word conclusion the gita sar of surgeon as a prognostic is a surgeon who is well trained has high volume center is constantly upgrading himself is available is compassionate and is egoless he who treats others like his brethren is going to be the savior and a positive prognostic factor for our patient and to conclude i said well the lord krishna said such a surgeon i will always bless but then i said let's remember let us not Let's believe in God, but not forget to lock our car. That means let's not forget to take all precautions. I mean, this is one of those things where uh, one can conclude down like this. Now, when we are concluding, we should have a message. The message can be either direct when you are doing a communication that come for in the end, you want to convey the place that I am the best trainer on this game. Please come and train, attend my workshop or have a fellowship with me that is called a direct benefit as a young surgeon you will not be involved in that but as an indirect benefit that if you take such precautions your life will be easier if you follow my technique you will be able to produce the same results in a cost effective manner if you use this you can have lesser mortality so you convey a message to the crowd so dear friends uh, this is first of the series on this. I would conclude on this. I would welcome your suggestions, improvements, so that when we come next Sunday on a newer topic, it should be better. Thank you very much for. Bye-bye.